Welcome to Tuberculosis 101. The goal of this program is to provide you with a basic overview of TB. After viewing this program, you should be able to explain the signs and symptoms of active and latent TB, including the risk factors that lead to those conditions, and explain the different TB treatment options to patients. Tuberculosis, or TB, is a disease caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. These bacteria can attack any part of the body, but they usually attack the lungs. This slide provides a concise overview of the distinction between an active and latent TB infection diagnosis. However, it's important for the health practitioner to understand there is actually a spectrum of TB signs and symptoms as it transitions from latent infection to active disease. Tuberculosis of the lungs usually results in no or minimal symptoms in its early infection stages. In most people, the primary infection is contained by the body's immune system, and the lesion, called a tubercle, becomes calcified so the person does not become sick and cannot pass the infection on to others. In many, the infection is permanently arrested. In others, the disease may break out again and become active years later, usually when the body's immune defenses are low. Untreated, the infection can progress until large areas of the lung and other organs are destroyed. Symptoms of the disease include cough, sputum, bleeding from the lungs, fever, night sweats, loss of weight, and weakness. The most common means of acquiring the disease is by inhalation of respiratory droplets. When people who have TB in their lungs or throat cough, laugh, sneeze, sing, or even talk, the germs that cause TB may spread through the air. If another person breathes in these germs, there's a chance that they'll become infected with tuberculosis. As you can see, the incidence of TB in Wisconsin is low. The common signs and symptoms of active TB disease include unexplained weight loss, loss of appetite, night sweats, fever, chills, fatigue, hemoptysis, and a cough for three weeks or longer if the TB is in the lungs. However, someone could be diagnosed with active TB without showing these symptoms. Wisconsin is considered a low incidence state for active TB. The two most common risks with acquiring TB in Wisconsin are being born in a country where TB is endemic and being a known contact with someone with active TB disease. Diagnosis is made by conducting a medical history, physical exam, and testing for TB infection. It can be confirmed by an x-ray of the chest and sputum examination. Ideally, treatment begins after a TB test signals exposure, but before active disease has developed. People with HIV AIDS are particularly vulnerable to TB disease. Therefore, HIV testing is recommended for all people suspected or confirmed of having active TB disease. HIV-positive people with TB have higher HIV viral loads than those without TB disease. It's also important to realize that HIV disease can mask TB symptoms and vice versa. HIV-positive individuals who test positive for TB have a 5 to 10 percent annual risk of TB disease. The treatment of choice for active cases is a combination of the antimicrobial drugs isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Tuberculosis drugs have to be taken regularly, typically for 6 to 12 months, and have to be given by directly observed therapy, or DOT which means that the medication is taken while being witnessed, usually by a public health staff member. This can be coordinated through Public Health Madison and Dane County. Here are the steps you need to take if you suspect TB in a patient. Make sure that they're isolated. Give them masks to wear and tell them to stay home. Call Public Health Madison Dane County within 24 hours at 266 4821 to report a person suspected of having active TB disease. During the weekend, call 267-3913 
and ask them to page the public health manager on call. Do not leave a message. You may need to hang up and try again in a few minutes. Make sure to set up a sputum collection for AFB smears, PCR, and cultures. Arrange for chest x-rays. Begin medication therapy, RIPE, and make a referral to an infectious disease doctor if appropriate. For latent TB infection, make sure that the skin test reaction is read between 48 and 72 hours after administration. A patient who does not return within 72 hours will need to be rescheduled for another skin test. Skin test interpretation depends on two factors, measurement in millimeters of the induration and on the person's risk of being infected with TB and of progression to disease if infected. To read the TST, the reaction should be measured in millimeters of the induration, which is the palpable raised hardened area of swelling. The reader should not measure erythema or redness. The diameter of the indurated area should be measured across the forearm, perpendicular to the long axis. Skin test reading cutoff points depend upon the patient's risk level for active TB disease. Refer to the slide or visit the CDC website for skin test cutoff points. Here's some information on the Bacillus calmet garin or BCG vaccine and the skin test. BCG is a vaccine given to infants and children in endemic countries if they have access to medical or public health care. The vaccine has been proven to decrease TB meningitis and disseminated TB in children in endemic countries. Skin test reactions of 10 millimeters or greater are considered true LTBIs and should be treated as such. BCG effectiveness wanes over time and generally does not interfere with the skin test if the reaction is over 10 millimeters. Prior BCG vaccination is not a contraindication for TB testing. The new interferon gamma release assays, IGRAs, such as quantiferon TB gold and T spot, do not react to BCG strains and may be useful in distinguishing likely TB infection from BCG reaction. LTBI is diagnosed through a positive skin test or IGRA test and a normal chest x ray. A person must also be free from active TB symptoms. There are three treatment choices for latent TB infection. One choice is the once-weekly dose of isoniazid and rifapentine. This is for a total of 12 weeks and must be done by directly observed therapy, which can be coordinated through Public Health Madison and Dane County. Another is a once-daily dose of rifampin. This regimen is for a total of four months or you can do a once daily dose of isoniazid. This regimen is for a total of nine months. There are many resources available to answer your TB-related questions. You can call Public Health Madison and Dane County or PHMDC at 608-266-4821. Be sure to ask for the TB nurse on call and leave a message on the confidential voicemail. You can also call the Public Health TB Program Manager, Kate Luther, at 608-243-0317. Public Health also has a patient training video on how to collect a sputum sample, which can be found at the YouTube link on the screen. You can also call the Wisconsin TB Program at 608-266-9692. For cases of drug-resistant TB, or for physician-to-physician -physician consults, you can call the Mayo Clinic Center for TB at 1-855-360-1466 or email them at tbcenter at mayo.edu. Here's a review of the key points you should remember. Understand the difference between active TB disease and latent TB infection. Understand the relationship between HIV and TB disease incidence. Remember that all patients suspected of having active TB disease must be reported to Public Health Madison and Dane County within 24 hours. Be sure that the patient is isolated. And finally, if you have any questions, feel free to call PHMDC at 608 
266-4821. Thanks for watching.